The direct east and west sundials are another type of universal dial. That is, their design allows them to be used anywhere on Earth when properly aligned for that location. You might see either an east or west dial mounted on a building, or they might be paired back to back along the line of their meridian. Notice the symmetry of their layout. These are really one type of dial, and the only difference is which way they face and if they are numbered with morning or afternoon hours. Their hour lines are parallel, and unlike other types of sundials, the faces will not indicate time near noon. Here we see two versions of a direct east dial face. The example on the left has added line work called dial furniture, where the shadow will also mark the annual path of the sun through the zodiac, including lines for the equinoxes and solstices. There is a notice or notch on the gnomon to follow the lines through the day. This is an example of a back-to-back -back installation of an east and west dial. We're looking at them head-on from the south. We see the two gnomons, the shadow casting devices, extend from the dial faces. At solar noon, only this edge will be in sunshine. Either side of noon, one of the paired dials will be in shadow, as we see on this west or afternoon dial face. Correspondingly, the other side, the direct east or morning dial in this example, would be exposed to the sun. Creating the line work for these dials is relatively simple using an equatorial dial. It again could be said that all dials are derived from the equatorial. The equatorial dial is a circle representing the equator with 24 equal hour segments of 15 degrees each. The 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. east-west hours of the equatorial are touching the lines that represent the dial plates. 6 o'clock will be the gnomon position. Extend the rest of the lines from the equatorial to create the parallel hour lines of the east and west dial plates. Or since the dials are symmetrical, you could draw only one side and change the numbers as necessary for the other side. Extend as many hours as you need to match the maximum daylight hours of your location. When doing your layout, don't forget to separate the 6 o'clock line by the width of the gnomon. The height of the gnomon above the dial plate will be equal to the distance between the 6 o'clock and 3 o'clock lines. This should also equal the radius of the equatorial circle that you use to create the line work. To get accurate readings, we need to align the gnomon and the parallel hour lines with north. That angle will be equal to the latitude where it will be used. At 43 degrees north, the earliest morning hour on the summer solstice will be 4.15. And as these dials don't reflect noon, the latest morning hour that it will show is about 11.15 a.m. And correspondingly, 12.45 to 7.45 on the west dial for this latitude. At zero degrees latitude, the gnomon will be horizontal. This is at the equator, so maximum daylight will barely be more than 12 hours. In this case, we would not need any hour lines above the gnomon at 6 o'clock. We might get only about 10 minutes of shadow above the gnomon on the summer solstice. At 90 degrees north latitude, the pole, the gnomon will point straight up. At the poles, we will have up to 24 hours of daylight in the summer. The hours on the dial at this point will look more like a polar dial with 6 o'clock instead of 12 o'clock at its center. But again, not able to mark the time near noon or midnight since it doesn't have a south face. Tipping the dial to match our latitude is the first step in getting accurate time readings. The second requirement is to align the dial with our meridian, that is, geographic north, 
not magnetic north as I keep emphasizing in these videos. This is a common mistake. Here I'm using a horizontal dial to help with this alignment since it has a built-in compass with magnetic correction for this location. You could do this just as well with a compass if you also know your magnetic correction. This aligns the paired east-west dials with the meridian, giving an accurate reading of solar time. This was the standard measure of time well into the 1800s until the advent of standard time and time zones. Additional corrections are now needed to correlate the two types of time. Adjustments for longitude, daylight saving time, and a value from the equation of time. This will be covered in other videos. The paired dials are now ready for reading solar time. Thanks for joining me for this introduction of the direct east and west sundials, and I hope that you will consider joining me for other sundial videos.